Carol here, a big warm welcome to my craft room and my first time ever acrylic pour. I'm going to take you step by step. This is the treadmill oil that I bought for this pour. I have never ever attempted to do this, but I was so intrigued by watching some tutorials lately that I went out and bought some supplies. Now obviously I didn't buy enough stir sticks. <laughs> So I cut them, <laughs> what's new, right? So I cut them in half, and I'm going to mention the names of the paints, but I just wanted to show you what they look like when I go about mentioning the colors so you can kind of get a visual. And I'm telling you, this first time acrylic pour, I think they call it a dirty pour, but I was determined not to get my area dirty. So I'm not calling it a dirty pour because I didn't get too much on the island that I work with for my crafts. If you are a first time viewer, you will know that I, uh, I don't do things such as this as far as acrylic pours. This is the ultimate first time ever. Now I bought a tin that was just a little bit on the outskirts larger than my 11 by 14 inch canvas, which I bought at the dollar store. You know my dollar store where nothing's a dollar? Well, I bought that there and a lot of the paints, the acrylic paints that I get for doing other projects. I bought some cups, some clear plastic cups. These are the larger ones to lift it up. And I bought some miniature ones. And here's the flow trawl. I got this at a paper, uh, uh, wallpaper place in town. And uh, so I got that. And what was really super sweet is I bought like, you know, the ketchup mustard, mustard squeeze bottles and the lid to it. I was actually pouring it into the plastic container that I bought at my dollar store. But the lid fit the flow trawl perfectly. I couldn't believe it, so I poured it back in. <laughs> yeah, why keep pouring it into a container when I can use the actual flow trawl container? So I put the lid on the, off the squeeze bottle, and then I put some, this is uh, actually, uh, I think this is dollar store white paint. I ended up putting the rest that I had of this one into it's just acrylic white and then I had a Martha Stewart pearlescent smaller bottle that I added to it as well yeah I cut the bottom right off I wasn't getting enough out of the top end so I thought oh I'll squeeze it out of the bottom why not right and I kept my bloopers in here you know if you watch my card and art tutorials I always keep my bloopers in there because that's what I do you know there it is that's the Martha Stewart pearlescent paint. It's white pearl. So I added that to the mixture. Probably it's a one quarter to three quarter inch or inch. Well, ratio one quarter pearlescent and three quarter of the plain acrylic white. Giving her a good shake, shake, shake. And there you have it. It actually worked to have it a really nice pearlescent color until you see the first pour. Oh my and keep in mind, I was determined to not get any mess anywhere. So there's my four large plastic cups. And I set, oh yes, gloves. Let's get those plastic, and my jewels. <laughs> yeah. You know I always put jewelry on when I'm doing anything. You know, it's just the start of my day. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to make sure that I have my jewels on, even if it's over top of my plastic gloves. Yes, this is crazy, isn't it? So I took my broken cut off stir sticks and here's the, the ratio. I end up putting it up for you because I, this is the first time I've done it and I found that I couldn't find a lot of tutorials on the actual ratio of it. So uh, yeah, I did spill some of course on the canvas of the flow trawl. That's okay, I wiped it up with a baby wipe. So it's half flow trawl to half acrylic paint. So first I 
these are like the mini little cups and I start putting in the mixtures here so I went across and I have all the flow trawl all of it is halfway up the cups this is the deco art I'm pretty sure the deco art silver so I put it just enough to the top because you know how the cups go out a bit and I needed a little bit of space to stir in the treadmill oil later on and a little bit of the water to make it to the consistency uh, that I thought the other tutorials I watched that they had. <laughs> yeah. This is like, okay, you know, whenever you're a little hesitant when you're doing something for the first time. Then I had the copper. Now the only two places I think is the dollar store where I have buy, buy things where nothing's a dollar. They have acrylic paint or Michael's. So the deco art, this is spun gold. I'm sorry for that. I'm getting an email in. I, I think every video has a ding in it, possibly. And I love this color right here, but it's the Sargent Ocean Green. Sergeant Art Ocean Green and I put that in there. It's just this beautiful soft turquoise. I don't know why it's an ocean green but it is a soft turquoise color and here I had the copper. There's two different kinds like of copper that I had in my stash. This is buttercream. It's called stately gray and I think this is more so for doing wood projects. It, it's in a small little bottle. You can see it up there at the end of the foil uh, pan. It's the one right at the end. And it, uh, it was a beautiful navy color. It was so rich. And I didn't know, I'm going to walk you through it because I didn't know what colors would work in a pour, you know. If you're doing a painting, like if I'm doing a painting, I know, you know, what colors I'm going to work with because they're going to stay put. If I'm doing a bird, I know that the colors aren't going to be all over the place. I'm going to put the wings one color and the breast one color, the head, so and so, yada, yada. But with a pour, you know, this is apple berry. I get apple barrel. I get that at my dollar store. Um, this is going to, I know it was going to move all over the place, you know. I just didn't know <laughs> what it was going to look like after it got done its journey. So here you go. I'm putting it in, like I said, half flow trial, half acrylic paint. And the funny thing is, here, I needed to add a little bit of water on a few colors. And I've learned a lot uh, with my first attempt at doing a pour, you know, an acrylic pour, that one, you do need a little tad bit of space to work on. Even when I do projects, I always squeeze the supplies in so close, I end up working with a small area, even though I work from a large, beautiful island. But here, I thought, I'm not going to have any of that paint go outside of that tray, that foil tray that it pan that I got. So here I'm doing what uh, the other people did on their tutorials and I only watched about six poor tutorials before I had the nerve to just go it on my own. And so what they did is they took the cup, they stirred it, and then they lifted up the actual um, stick and they looked at it and it's not to be thick but not too thin. Yes, so you have to get that ratio down to where it pours because it is called an acrylic pour. So here I go. I'm just going to mix it all up here and then I add some water. I ran out of sticks. <laughs> so I thought, okay, the golds are pretty close. One is a deep, deep gold and the other one is more of a vibrant gold. So I just borrowed the stick and I added three drops of treadmill oil to each one of these. Now these are little mini um, see-through cups, you know, plastic cups, the little mini ones. And that's at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar as well. And I got the large ones, too, that I bought there to lift up the actual 11 by 14 inch canvas. So here I noticed, okay, now I did learn that when you put that silicone in, if you're a first time person like me, like a beginner, just, you know, this is the first time at it, you're going to not want to stir that treadmill oil too much. That's what they said. 
just give it a little stir and then leave it be because that is going to make your cells, you know? And the Floetrol is what is going to make it flu. Oh yeah, I've got this down so far. I didn't get it down the first time. Okay, the first pour, oh my. It was an experience, let me tell you. I learned so much by my mistakes and even my mistakes with choosing the colors that I put down. Just to see what, you know, when they met up, they did, they weren't friends. They weren't very friendly when the two colors met up. <laughs> yeah. Didn't matter how much I, you know, tilted it this way or tilted it that way. And now I got to stop here because I'm putting it in order. I'm putting half in a big cup. So each color I'm emptying out half. Then in the same order, I am going back and I am putting the rest of it in there. And I noticed that the silver is more liquid because I did add, I put a squirt of water in each of them because just with the flow trawl and the acrylic paint, it was too thick. So I added a few, you know, probably a drop of water in one of the squeeze bottles. And then you have to remember you're putting three drops of the treadmill oil in it also. So that's going to thin it out some. So now I am just, oh yeah, getting it all in there. The color that I, there's two colors that didn't coordinate together. They were not friendly with each other. And you will see when I pour it all out of this cup what I'm talking about. It is that upper to the far left copper and the pink and purple. Okay, pink, purple, copper. They do not flow. When you're moving it, doesn't matter where you move it, unless you moved it right off your canvas they don't connect together they don't want to be friends they don't look good either so I grabbed a piece of paper some of my uh, card making paper tipped it over <laughs> wasn't that cute it kind of gave me an idea on the paper what I was going to deal with once I lifted the cup up that's for sure but look at me go here oh yes and determined to keep everything contained on that pan on that silver pan yes look at that now the beauty of it I was really excited here because I did actually get to see some cells but I'm going to tell you it's going to take a lot of pouring to get that uh, look that clay look I didn't like it at all and then the Pepto-Bismol thing that's happening there <laughs> I didn't like that either it, it's oh yeah um, I don't know you know, you may have that color in your house and this would be magnificent, you know, magnifique if you dealt with these colors that you're going to hang this up and you have it in your house. But I just couldn't make head nor tail of what to do with this. I didn't even know where to pour it to make it look better, to get those browns out of there. But I was having a blast looking at the cells popping open. That was kind of neat. You know, you actually do get cells with that treadmill oil. And I just couldn't, I really, it didn't matter how much I stared at this thing, I couldn't come to terms with it. I couldn't come to terms with the pepto -bismol look colliding down there with the 60s purple. And then throw some of that clay color in there. And it just, my eyes didn't know where to go on this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm putting my cups back down to set it down, and I'm going to say, okay, let's just stare at it for a minute. Let's see what I can do. I'm looking at my hands there thinking, ooh, look at that mess. So I took my gloves off, as you will see right there. Oh, no, I didn't. I cleaned them up. I ran and washed them so they were clean. I kept them on. And Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, yes, of course, my dog has to walk across my pore. I mean, what's with that? So now, <laughs> yeah, nothing else could go wrong. I mean, that was just perfect. So I'm grabbing some of the acrylic paint and putting it on there. There, let me tell you this. I think the next time I do an acrylic pour, I'm going to uh, not be afraid to have too much paint. Look at that. I put some of that brown in there. Oh yes, yeah, you can tell I'm going, oh, what have I done? What have I done? But I know with whatever I've done, I've got to cover the uh, edges of the canvas. So uh, yeah, let's move on here. 
So I take out my heat tool because I don't have one of those uh, uh, blaze stick things that, that uh, the professional acrylic pourers use there. Can't think of the name of it right now. You know, the, oh my. Yeah, it just lets fire out the end of it. And it heats the cells and they all come to the surface. But my heat tool is pretty hot. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to go with that because what if I don't enjoy it? Why am I going to go out and buy all this stuff uh, if I don't enjoy it? And the only thing I think I didn't have was that tool, that that fire thing, that gun, that fire gun. Can you believe I can't even think of that? So here I go and look at that a close up. I mean, I have to show you what I was left with. And this was it. It was, uh, I can almost see a Pepto-Bismol uh, bird in there. Oh yeah, let's just hop along. Look at that. I was trying to figure out, okay, let me take my um, Copic uh, gun there and turn on my, my compressor. Yes, I had to stop it there. It's my compressor and my Copic air gun without the Copic marker in it. And I was trying to make some flowers. I was trying to push out some flowers, but the brown and that pink, I'm not... <laughs> Yes, I had some leftover um, mustard brown. So I thought, okay, let's just put all of the colors that are left over directly on top. Let's just try and do something over top of that Pepto-Bismol pink. I really should have gone down to the other corner, but I thought, okay, let's move this. Oh, isn't that something? I don't even know what to say here. I've lost... Words cannot express what I was thinking right here when I put that uh, mustard colored brown on there with my other brown and my uh, pink, that Pepto-Bismol pink. And yeah, I just thought, wow. And then I start moving around with my fingers. <laughs> and you know what happened here? The paint got thick. It sat in the cup so long, it put blobs on there. So I'm picking the blobs out. And I'm going, whoa, yeah, let's let's just, okay, here's what I'm going to do. But I forgot when I watched this tutorial, you don't make feathers on top of your acrylic paint. You make feathers with that string on an empty white or cream or whatever color canvas you want. You don't do it on top of a ton of paint like that. Oh, I'm telling you. But anyway, I forgot that because I only watched a few tutorials and I forgot the feather thing. I knew that I needed a bowl. I knew I needed to have some uh, string, you know, some of this wool, this thick uh, cotton string. And I mixed up that dreadful looking uh, clay color. Oh, yes. And then I grab it and I forget what end makes the feather. <laughs> so I cut it off. And I'm going, okay, I think they put it down like this. And then I think, uh, let me see, I'm going, okay. Now, look, I have no gloves on when I'm doing this. Yes, my poils and my gloves are missing. And I'm going, wait a minute, where's my feather? Hello, are you in there? Hello, hello, come on, jump out. I've got all the string on there. Where's my feather? It reminds me of just being like a three-year-old and using, yeah, don't touch, yeah, don't touch that, Carol. Don't get on the computer with your messy hands. That's not a good thing. So I thought, okay, let's add water. <laughs> Can you believe that? Look, oh yes, let's just mingle that water. Why isn't it going anywhere? Why isn't this clay leaving my canvas? I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> No kidding, Carol. We don't understand and we're looking at it. Well, you hang on because this does turn into something I really do like. I really did like it. But it, I had to go through this process. What can I say? I, I had to understand the method of uh, colors going to move together on this pour. That's the key. And, you know, sometimes when you watch a tutorial, even with the artwork that I do, you know, card making or doing, you know, vintage shabby chic canvas, uh, whatever it is that I'm working on, 
it takes a little bit of um, experience, a little bit of experiential learning there. That, and it takes mistakes and it takes, uh, you know, all these things to understand the concept. When people do videos, generally the first pour, I can only imagine from doing this, it doesn't turn out perfect because you have to learn how to do it. And I'm thinking, okay, let's get the flow trawl back out. I've got to do something here because this is not cutting it for me. This, where am I going to hang that? <laughs> yeah. So I had some of the, I put some flow trawl in the leftover white that I had had. I poured it into a bigger cup. Then I added uh, the, let's see, I've got the flow trawl in that leftover bit of white. I add a ton of white that pearl and white. I put it in there because I thought, okay, let's just mix that up. Okay, get my chop suey stick here, mix that up. Flow trawl, white paint with pearl paint. So it's a quarter ratio, quarter flow trawl, three quarters of acrylic paint. Stir it all up and then I thought maybe I could get this look of a curtain, you know, like a folded beautiful curtain. And then these colors in the background of the curtain. That's what I was thinking. I added a few, uh, a little few, a little bit of drops in there. I think of the treadmill oil. Let me just look because I'm looking at it. Yep, one. Oh yeah, squirting this stuff right out. <laughs> I can't even tell you. I'd say it's probably seven drops. Yes. <laughs> Why do you see this? This one just cracked me right up. I thought, okay, let's go for a curtain look. Yeah, I should be taking a good bit of coca-cola there look at this where okay where's my curtain come on what happened here I'm thinking to myself it looks like milk looks like a gallon of milk of magnesia not even milk milk of magnesia went right over top of my Pepto-Bismol and my clay and all those colors and I'm going come on um yeah oh it slipped on me <laughs> It slipped, and I didn't want to make any mess. I'm going to show it to you in slow motion. Here comes my curtain. Slow motion for everybody. Come on, curtain. Come on. This is nice and thick. Oh, yeah. And then all of those colors underneath are supposed to come up and look like a curtain that's being opened. That's what was in my mind. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I tell you what. Right now, I'm thinking, now, where am I going to hang this? But on the, on the positive side here, I never give up on anything. So I looked at this and I thought, okay, can I put this up on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, of course I can. Because this is the failure before the actual bright sunlight bursts through here. This is just what happens when you're experimenting with things. So I took the leftover flow trawl and white paint mixture I had up there. I put a little bit of ocean green gold and I stirred it lightly, just ever so lightly. Yes. And the mixture had enough of the white with that beautiful um, iridescent white in there that when I put it on top of this milk of magnesia thing I got going there, I decided to do it from the bottom, from the top down. Now you can see it had some gloobies in there, the globby gloobies, because that white had set down in there for a little bit, so it thickened up, but that's okay. I just picked them out. I really didn't mind. I think there was four of them. You can almost count them there. I just took, I don't know, tweezers or something and picked them out of there. Oh, there it is. And then I took uh, whatever I was working on to get them out. I just mixed it all up and Look at that. I am actually happy because you can see some of the mauve and the pink showing through here. And I really did envision an aquatic uh, theme going on here. Don't you? I can see the ocean in there. And wait till you see what I do a little later on. It's kind of cool, actually. I'm trying to answer some uh, some emails were coming through and I thought I got to get rid of this and just turn it off because it's very distracting. I want to concentrate on my pour. So here we go. This is my third pour. This is pour number three over top of pour number two and pour number pour number one. You know, so uh, I wish I had taken a picture though of the first pour 
uh, just to show you the difference from the end result to the, you know, from the beginning stage to the end result, but I didn't. So anyway, I am getting some cells popping up with my heat gun. And uh, here's the funny part. I thought, I remember a video I watched that had a balloon. And they pounced these balloons in there and they got actual um, flowers out of it. So I was cleaning one of my spare bedrooms the other day and my grandson Hunter's balloon popped out <laughs> from underneath the bed. And I said, woohoo! Oh, thank you, Lord. Look at that. I have a pouncer. I have the balloon because I didn't have one. I wasn't going to blow up one of my um, plastic, you know, my gloves that I had. So uh, this just turned out when he popped out from underneath the bed, I was so happy. I can't even tell you. Yes, I was singing the hallelujah chorus there because I had a balloon, a happy face balloon. At that, just smiling back at me, Carol, this is why you don't give up. This is it. Take a deep breath, smile, and yeah, just I'm trying to squeeze that balloon so I have some pounce on it. And I'm going, come on, come on. Can a flower pop out of there, please? Something pop out of there that it, to me, looks like something. Yeah, I'm trying to say, should maybe I should cover it, but I didn't have enough white, as you can see, that it was like, no, I don't think adding those dots really helped me, but I'm going to keep doing it and then I wiped the balloon off and oh yeah smiles started coming in joining me in my craft room look at there happy faces all over the place because you know what I thought of right there jellyfish oh yes this is an ocean scene these are two jellyfish and after it dried here yeah I turned it over after it was dry and I said oh I can't deal with the back of that Good night, look at that mess. So I thought, okay, I've got to stop everything. I've got to stop everything. I've got to get out. I have this beautiful seaweed stamp. Take a, I think, I don't know if I was drinking iced, yeah, iced tea I was drinking there. And I thought, okay, I'm going to grab some cotton and I'm going to grab some lace and I'm going to cover the back because I can't look at the back of that. When I'm so happy with the front, I don't want to be reminded of what happened at the first pour. I want to cover it. So I grabbed some lace, of course. You know I love lace. And I grabbed some of my cotton, you know, piece of cotton. And I cut it out to measure the 11 by 14. And I thought, all right, I'm going to completely, almost completely hide it. I'll have the cotton on the bottom. And it's almost like, a, it's so see-through. You can see I got out my little iron board and uh, my little craft iron. And I pressed this cotton down that I had cut out to, you know, it was a little over the 11 by 14 because I'm going to take out my hot glue gun and we are going to cover the back of this canvas. So out comes my number one scissors that I've never used, my material scissors. Remember when I bought these? I couldn't wait to actually cut material with them. Oh, they just cut like butter. These, I think they're Call it pronounced ginger scissors are amazing these are my I have three pairs of them and I cherish them so here we go I know you've probably never seen a dirty pour or acrylic pour whatever you want to call it where they stop everything and they make a lace back for it but not completely because Hunter came and said nanny can you do eye surgery on my shark and I said, of course I can. I'm doing an aquatic acrylic pour. I'll do surgery. His eyes fell off. <laughs> and he wanted some googly eyes on his little uh, shark. So I stopped what I was doing, of course, and I put little googly eyes on him. And Hunter was very happy because, uh, yeah, he likes his shark. And uh, he lost his eyes. I think one of his little dogs... Uh, must have been playing with it and shook his eyes off. So now he has eyes. He's got shark googly eyes. And then I moved on to my acrylic pour. And it's my aquatic acrylic pour. Yeah, I had to show you that. You know, sometimes you have to step away and do a few little things. And that's what I did. I helped Hunter out and put googly eyes on his shark. 
So now I am going to do a hot pour. Notice I don't use my fingers there. Yes, Charlene will be happy to see this. I am using my uh, pink uh, stick there. Uh, it has the silicone bottom on it so I don't burn myself. And here we go. I'm just going to go, I'm not going to show you the entire thing. I'll really help you uh, not have to endure that. I had to cut down a hot stick because I'm using my fat glue gun here that lets out a lot of glue. Look at the mess of that. And then I am just really pulling on it to get a good tight fit so I don't have to look at the back side of this. I don't know. I thought maybe I would give this away uh, when I reach my 20,000 subscribers. And I mean, I can't imagine anybody wanting it. <laughs> but you never know, you know. Uh, I like it. I don't mind it. I don't, the end result to me, I was really happy with it. Extremely happy with it, actually. So that's why I don't mind giving it away as a gift. Once I get this uh, first layer on of the nice soft cotton, I'll cut around it and then I'll move on to put the lace doily over top of that because you could still see it. And here's the end result right here. I turn this over. This is upside down. I end up having to figure out which side I want to be up. And I really like the lace doily on the back. I didn't center the big flower. I like it off to the side. Uh, and then I'm going to put some of this, uh, like a deep, I'm sorry, a light turquoise, just like the ocean green. It is a lovely uh, ribbon. And uh, it's corrugated ribbon, which is really nice. It's not satin. It's a corrugated ribbon. It's nice and thin. And it just adds that extra uh, edge. And there you have it, my friends. It's all finished. Look at that. And then I fold over the corners so they look nice and well done. Uh, and then back, we're going to go back to the pour. Now, what I decided to do is, the more I stared at this, yeah, I turned it the other way, the more I looked at it, I could actually see ocean creatures in there, like ocean fish. I saw a turtle, I saw, uh, oh, let me see, uh, what do you call that? One, there's the turtle, I don't know if you can see that there, there's the turtle head, even the eye. And then I saw a bass. And I know there are ocean bass, even though I live in Canada and we have the, the our Great Lakes. But um, yeah, let's move on to the ocean here. So here is my cute little turtle. And I took out my Stadler pencils. And this one is an H. It's a light value. Uh, it's uh, a soft value, I should say, a harder value in the H's. And then I move on to the more, to the higher numbered B's. And that's a medium value from the F to the B's. It, it just graduates itself up into a nice soft graphite pencil. But I wanted to go over the outlines with this H pencil. And this is a Stadler. I got it at my stationery store and it's made in Germany. It's beautiful art pencil. Here I'm just putting the flapper thingy on my turtle. <laughs> it's arm. Let's say it's arm. Uh, yeah, I don't know a lot about uh, ocean creatures, as you can tell. I took my, uh, I think it's an actual, I'm trying to think of well, who makes that. It's a microfine white eraser. It's just a mini, uh, just a small, small micro eraser. I really like it. It's a click one, which is nice. So here I'm just doing the outside of the turtle. I did not want to lose the actual pore, you know, the cells that are in the turtle. And here's my uh, bass. It's almost like a rock bass, but I know they're not in the ocean. But And it had a hook. Do you see the hook going into the mouth? It's kind of like jumping out of that wave onto the hook. It's amazing what you can see. It's like laying down on the grass and looking up at the clouds. You know, it's just beautiful. You can see, you know, your eye will envision so many things, and it really did with this. And then those uh, flowers that I wanted to be, my balloon bouncer flowers, ended up being jellyfish. I mean, perfect jellyfish. So here I have 
the uh, uh, the B family of my pens and I, I pencils. I end up telling you what kind they are. I love this one. It's the 9000 series, of the grass, graphite pencil. It's beautiful. Nice and thick. It's made by Faber-Castell and uh, it's just gorgeous. And I end up going over it because it has a nice uh, dark, you know, it's in the B family and uh, it just, you know, is a nice soft pencil. So I like that. So I graduated over to that. And now when I'm satisfied with the markings that I did make on my little turtle, I couldn't believe that when I looked at this without taking a breath, <laughs> yeah, without taking a breath, look at the turtle head. I mean, it was perfect. And look at my bass with his mouth open, ready to snatch that hook. It, it just was amazing. I had so much fun after the pour was finished, you know, than the actual pour. I didn't have too much fun at the beginning. <laughs> That's my fault. It's nobody else's fault but mine. I chose the colors that went in that. But when I went over my um, creamy mixture there, my milk of magnesia mis mixture, and, and put just that combination of the ocean green, the gold, and the white pearl and basic white, this is what it came out with. And I loved it. And I loved just sitting back for a little bit and looking right into the pour. Yeah, I didn't uh, finish that, but I decided to keep that because that's a reminder of what it looked like before. <laughs> Here's my little cups. I'm just setting this on my little cups so that I can sit and draw and find all of the ocean creatures in there so that I can take my graphite pencil and um, trace it, trace over the images that I see. You may see something else, but this is what I see. And I only went over the outlines. I didn't make any um, lines that weren't necessarily right in there. And look at right here. This is a perfect, I don't know if it's a manatee, uh, a dolphin. Probably this one's a dolphin. I think it was the other one. And everything, I like, get right down to the eyeball and right down to the crazy lips on this dolphin. <laughs> it was all. It was right there. Even the fin. I mean, everything. Look at it. Beautiful. And I just let it go right off. I have to, I end up going back with the eraser. I didn't want to look like a shark. I wanted it to look like a dolphin. And doesn't it though? Oh, I was so crazy pleased. And then I went over to the side of the pour and I wanted to put in these, um, one's a shark and uh, let's see, one was a fin, but I made it into another uh, dolphin coming up out of the bottom of the actual pour. And uh, that was the shark. And then the two balloon pouncer things, perfect jellyfish. The only thing that is so funny about this, and I'm going to wait until it's over with what I did, um, it was crazy funny, but uh, I just did whatever I saw. I went back to darken it up when I was happy with it, and uh, then I went over it with the eraser. I went with the dark B pencil, uh, the nice 9000 series, the Faber-Castell pencil, graphite pencil, and then I softened it up so it kind of looked like it had shadow with this actual micro eraser. And all the cells are there, everything is there. Uh, just the outline, all I went over, I think the only thing I added to this was the flapper thing of the turtle, his arm there, uh, wasn't in the actual um, pour, but I couldn't leave it without, without them. I put one going down the side so I could stick to the actual uh, pour, and then I gave him the one foot there coming out of his shell, that was in the pour. The only thing that wasn't in the pour was the uh, flapper thing. The, the swimmy thing, you know, the fin thing. <laughs> I'm digging myself, aren't I? Yeah, but the eye was there, the mouth was there. I didn't want to add even my, it looks so much like a rock bass and that had a wonderful hook. But I know there is, my friend told me that there are ocean bass. So I stuck with it because I couldn't leave that bass without uh, sketching it in, you know. 
and I didn't, I took the, that's what I'm doing here, I took the eraser and I'm making it so that it's not a harsh line. I'm softening up all of the edges of the actual drawing and then I'll cut the eraser down so the white is showing. When I push it away, I'm taking all of the black off the end of the nice soft white eraser there. So I'm really happy with the turtle. I'm really happy with the dolphin, with the shark, and then with the fish. Like there's the shark I'm doing right now. Perfect lines on here. Um, I actually really like my uh, jellyfish. I'm just going over these lines just to make, I'm going to crisscross it as you can see. It's there, but I kind of want to make it look three-dimensional. Then I had this stamp in my, obviously in my stash. I hadn't used it yet, and it was seaweed. Can you believe it was seaweed? And I bought it because I really liked it. I knew I would use it one day. Here I am just going over the jellyfish lines and I decided to use that the only thing I added as an addition to the pour was this stamp and it's a seaweed stamp and I have to get my own gold in there. Even though there is gold in the pour, I had to get my own um, lines in there and these are just the jellyfish lines that are in the actual pour that you see me just contouring here and there. And there's the stamp. I thought it was um, seaweed anyway. I, I thought it was, I just loved this when I ordered it. I thought it was wonderful, one of a kind. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, that's where I'm putting it. I use the LDRS Creative Watermark to put it down. It's like a Versa mark. And then I add my gold lines. And then I take some of it out with my uh, cutting knife and uh, my pokey tool so that it's fine lines coming down from the jellyfish, just like that. I wanted it to, uh, I'm gonna heat set it, and I'm using my blush brush here. I'll heat set the gold, and I love this look. Coming out, making that balloon pounce a jellyfish. I really do like it. I love the idea that I got to do it with pencil, to outline it with the B pencils, the graphite pencils. Uh, charcoal pencils, whatever you want to use. And here I'm just accentuating the lines that are going out from the jellyfish from the pour. And uh, I really like it. And then I add to the bottom of the jellyfish, I add more of that seaweed stamp going down. Here I just want to soften up some of the edges so I do go back so the lines aren't so harsh. And yeah, and then I'm going to do it again right there, just the bottom edges. I don't do the top, just the point of the seaweed stamp. Then I <clears throat> add the Versamark. In my case, it's the LDRS Creative Watermark. Um, and that is just a wet ink that you can apply your embossing powder. Here's my um, cutting knife, my cutting blade, and I'm making, taking out what I don't want there. I want to make it look fine and I want to make it look like it's graduating from the first stamp down to the second stamp. Then I'll take off what I don't want with the blush brush. Look at me here. Yeah, <laughs> stuff everywhere. Don't I do that? It doesn't matter what project I have. I always give myself such a small space on such a big island that I work off of. I feel so comfortable squeezed in. You know what I'm saying? Now I get out my Signo white pen. This just made it. This did it. I outlined all of the dark edges with the Signo White Gel Pen. And I'm telling you, I went down the jellyfish um, with the white. So, you know, all those streamlined, the jellyfish has all those little thingies that hang off of it. Uh, and I did it in white. And it was so, it just, I don't know, with the with the Milk of Magnesia background and doing the white signal pen, it just pulled it all together. Here we go. I'm putting these uh, tentacle things all the way down the jellyfish. I don't know what you call them, but that sounds close enough to me. And uh, I don't think National Geographic is going to get a hold of me anytime soon. In case you're interested in what pencils I used, here's the Stadler and their Lumograph. Lumograph they say on the end of them. I have sketched with these forever. Forever I've had these pencils. And uh, then I took my Faber-Castell Jumbo graphite pencils. These is in the B line, these, which means they're darker. It just has a darker value. 
then the H, it has a light value. So yeah, put them all back in there and we're going to go back to the finishing piece. I had some of these clear gems, these clear glass round gems, and I put them on there. And wouldn't you know, okay, I have to tell you right here, uh, this will tell you how much I know about the ocean. Maybe I won't tell you yet. There is a little ways to go. But I wanted to have some bubbles going up from my dolphin there. I wanted the odd, um, you know, just uh, bubbles, just looking like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, down deep in the ocean and you know fish go by and it makes all those bubbles <laughs> I don't have any scientific language to use for them uh, it's honeybee I use the honeybee little beads and uh, then I had these and they're sticky and they're nice too but they're big and so I didn't use them uh, I stuck with the little glass gems here and I'm lifting it up and I'm putting it down with my hot glue gun, which made it look even more iridescent up close. It really did look like bubbles, like glass. Look at my turtle. I think he's the cutest thing ever, ever. Yeah. And uh, I'm just taking a pencil here to put the outline of his eye. And see that white underneath the turtle there that I made that little shell? I took that out because it looked like he kind of had a, an overbite. <laughs> so I took that out at the end. I don't know if you can see it. And look it. I gave these crazy jellyfish eyeballs. Jellyfish don't have eyeballs. Now, if they do have eyeballs, I'm going to have to look it up. But nowhere have I ever seen, uh, and I watch a lot of things with my younger grandchildren on, on nature and all the things that God has made and in the depths of the deep blue sea and I have never seen a jellyfish with eyeballs till today. Look at that. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> I, I did take them off. I want you to know I did take them off. I'm so embarrassed I turned it over. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? I gave it eyes. Oh, I have an octopus in there too. I ended up tracing out an octopus right there. See him right there with the gold? Oh yeah, yeah, I did a light trace on him. And uh, I had so much crazy fun. It was, it was wonderful. Thank you so much to everybody that, that goes on YouTube and does uh, acrylic pour. You inspired me. You know, just watching a few videos, I went out and bought as much of this stuff I could get. <laughs> and then I got intimidated because I thought, I don't know how to do this. And then I thought, Carol, you don't know how to do a lot of stuff, but you just delve into it anyway. That's what I do. And here you have it, my friends. There's the back. It has, uh, I don't know, it's just 11 by 14. I love that I put all the different fish in there. And even with my jellyfish having eyeballs, man alive. Could you get any crazier? I don't think so. After what I did at the beginning, like the first pour, it didn't matter, you know? And, uh, oh, I guess I put a little bit more in here. What was I doing here? Oh, I was softening up the edges on there. Sorry. It must have uh, came apart or something. This is when I noticed I've got to take those white marks out underneath the poor turtle's face. And look at my bass. Oh, I love it. What am I doing here? I'm actually showing you that I'm putting the eyeballs in again. I loved it so much, I did it again. I put it in the edit. <laughs> Crazy look. Uh, oh, I just set them there. That's what I did at first. I, I kept questioning myself, do jellyfish have eyes? I don't know. I did that jellyfish going upwards in case you didn't see anything coming down. I made the, the pour went up. So one of the, yeah, see how it goes up like that? I left it kind of plain. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this. I hope you are inspired to do a pour, you know, and even if it doesn't look up, look what, jellyfish with eyes? What's going on here? <laughs> Have yourself a blessed week. I hope you enjoyed the pictures, and I hope you enjoyed the process. See you, everybody. Bye now.